Okay, we are at Mitsua. Get the sign, get the sign. We are at Mitsua Marketplace in Edgewater, New Jersey. Hooray! And we didn't take a train because uh, I don't think Edgewater has a train station. Um, it's an all Japanese outlet mall. All Japanese all the time. Awesome. They have some of the best udon in all of New Jersey. I brought Timmy the talking creeper. Of course you did. We're <laughs> first, we're gonna, I'm going to show him some of the stores, including my favorite store, Little Japan. And then we're going to go do some grocery shopping. Oh crap, I forgot my shopping bags. Do you mind if I grab them real quick? Yes. Yeah, we'll get... It's like something extra uh, Toy Story 3. If you want to get out of here, get rid of that monkey. We just got a Daiso store. Hey, hey, hey. Where are we going next? Uh, not this store, the store. Yeah, no thanks. Where I am ugly. <laughs> I'm ugly and I'm proud. We are ugly first, and we're let proud. Double, first, let me double check the hours. Monday. What time is it? Oh, we got time. It's Sorry. not 7 p.m. yet. This is the Toy Store. Yeah, it's okay. Monday. Zaro's Adventure. Ah oh, ha ha. Wow. This place is grand. Japanese slippers. Ooh. Very nice. Ooh. Kanji shirts. Looking around. Please don't block me, YouTube. Oh, look at all those stuffed animals. I already have a stuffed come out of Dragon Shane. Guess what I named her? What's her name? Lizzie. Get it? Because she's a lizard. <laughs> I thought you named after Lizzie. someone else. <laughs> you said Lizzie. Lizzie the lizard. Lizzie the lizard. Oh. <laughs> come out of dragons are cute. Oh, hot pick. Toss. That's Stitch. Oh, look at all these pushings, these squishies. Do not resist the power to squish. Squish. Shane, look. I'm squishing. Squish. Squish. You squish. Feel the squish. The power of the squish. Aren't these, uh, you ever heard of squish mellows? Oh, yeah. Squishy. I, I'm not a vegetarian, and I d I've never seen myself becoming one, but look at the, how morbid this is. A chicken in the chicken sandwich, like a live chicken. Oh, I bet Peter would love that. Oh, yeah, so look at this. A live rabbit and a hot dog. What is these squishies? You squishy, squishy, squishy. Touch the squish. Squishy, squishy. He burnt my shake. <laughs> look at this beautiful view oh. of the city. Check out that uh, short they got, that little, it's kind of like... Light too. And get over there too. Yeah, right by the Atlantic, boys. I think that's the... Welcome uh, to the East Coast! I'm like very Central privileged Park to say that I've Park. been to both this coasts this, this year. When she moves in with me. Because we'll probably be coming here often, because Winna loves Japanese food. For those of you who don't know, I have a girlfriend now. Yeah. Her name is Winna. She lives in Indonesia, but one day she'll move here and we'll get married. Yippee! And she's not a scammer because we video call every day. So she is who she says she is. And she loves Japanese food. And she knows uh, you're not a scammer either. Exactly. Alright. And I'm a dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> and what am I then? I don't know. You're, you're the Shane Kraken. Shane the Kraken. <laughs> Shane Gilman, Teenage Bracken. <laughs> Paid for the drink separately. Yeah, oh man, the tonight we feast. First we feast, reference to the YouTube channel. Say unlike, feast un unlike, unlike fiction, this is feast of this is feast of nonfiction. Exactly. Udon. I love wait tell me. Uh, remember I love Udon. <laughs> remember Master Udon. You know who that is, Daniel? No. Who? From SpongeBob. Remember that episode? Oh yeah, I remember that. that. Karate Island. From the main, he's the main antagonist, right? And Sandy has to fight him at the end of the episode, yeah. and he kicks, she kicks him into the ocean. Yep. Despite, them, despite them already being under the ocean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, SpongeBob, the hell of logic. Okay, viewers, I have a bit of a confession to make. We filmed this video uh, yesterday on January 22nd. I'm recording this the day after. Uh, January 23rd, and I want to apologize. When I was filming this video yesterday with uh, Shane and the Dans, on the like, I was going. I I'd have been up since like 6 a.m. Like I tried getting up at like 5:30, but like I slept through my alarms and whatnot. And I've been up 
that was up yesterday since like 6 a.m. because I had to work at an AM shift at the Dogtopia I've, I've been working at since October. And like I was, Daniel picked us all up at like 3.30 p.m. because I got off work at 1 p.m. And like by the time we were like driving home from the place or about to drive home, I was way too exhausted to even remember filming like an outro, like, you know, like a proper like conclusion to the end of the video. Be huge thanks to Daniel for driving us all yesterday, like with you know Daniel, Shane, Danny. Yesterday was a lot of fun. Thank you guys a lot. Like it was, it was great. <laughs> but yeah, I figured I could kill two birds with one stone today because I can you know make this video of this us acting silly at the Matsua you know outlet mall that we went to, and also today the award nominees were announced for the Oscars that are right around the corner and I'm gonna I, I figured like I've been doing like thoughts on the Oscars on my YouTube channel for quite a long time now so I figured like a uh, I could just give very like bite-sized like straight to the point thoughts on like my opinions on like the not every single category of course just like the ones I care about the most like I've seen uh, so I've seen three out of the ten best picture nominees. Like I'm just I'm reading them off right now from like uh, the New York Times. The the full list is American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, uh, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. I've seen Oppenheimer, Barbie, and Killers of the Flower Moon. I haven't seen any others. I think the first out of those on my to watch list is Poor Things. My sister and I like when my sister. And I filmed our like little mini review for Wonka back around Christmas. We were gonna see Poor Things that night, but like we got you know, we just you know we unfortunately we got a little behind schedule. So it's like oh it's, we're a little too late for Poor Things now. But like why don't we go see Wonka instead? So I'm gonna see Poor Things at some point uh, before the season rolls around. And best director like a. I could see it going to either Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon or Christopher Nolan. Like, I really hope Christopher Nolan wins, though, because my man hasn't won a single Oscar, like, for Best Director, and he totally deserved it. Oppenheimer was... I'm just so happy that even, like, the Academy, as, as, as like, old and snobby as they are, even they love the whole Barbenheimer <laughs> meme that Barbie and Oppenheimer are both nominated for so many awards, including Best Picture. It's just... Uh, it's legendary. And, uh, let's... I'm, again, I'm just, like scrolling through these like big you know shout out to lily gladstone for being nominated for best actress and you know robert downey jr for best supporting actor for oppenheimer uh, for those who don't know lily gladstone is in killers of the flower moon and ryan gosling for best supporting actor for ken you know for barbie and uh you know i'm really i really want to watch like uh, uh poor things because i love emma stone she's one of my favorite actresses and i've heard like amazing things about uh poor things too and adapted screenplays is so so diverse this year. You got Barbie, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. And an animated feature, I'm really disappointed that Super Mario Bros. and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem weren't like Oscar nominees for Best Animated Feature. Because like the, both those films were in my top nine favorite movies of the year list. And Super Mario Bros. was nominated for a lot, like, you know, for uh, quite a few Golden Globe nominees. It was nominated for Best Animated Feature at Golden Globes, as well as, uh, you know, Best Song for Peaches. Like, dang it! Like, I was I was so, like, crossing my fingers. I got my hopes so high for for Super Mario Bros. to be the very first, like, adapta film adaptation of a video game to be nominated for Best, like, for, like, be nominated for at least one Oscar. Like, that'd be so great. If the Academy could finally recognize, like, hey, video games are art too, and they can, you know, lead to great films like this. Oh man, I, but like, and Mutant Mayhem was just like it was such a whole. It was like so unique compared to other like Ninja Turtles films we got. Like, I already gushed over that movie enough, both my review for it and like my top. And I was it was number four my like top nine list. But yeah, I've seen all these except Robot Dreams, you know, for Best Animated Feature. We also got Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Robot Dreams is like a French-Spanish film. It looks interesting. I should probably check it out before the ceremony rolls around. And I did watch the first half of Nimona back in the summer when I was interning at the Utica Zoo. Like, I had access to my mom's Netflix account at the time, but Netflix is being really stingy about password sharing, and now you have to, like, be in the same household as, like, the person... You can't like share passwords anymore. So 
Unfortunately, I only watched the first half of Nimona. It looks, it's really good from what I I got from the first half of it, and I definitely would like to finish it at some point. Now, I'm very pleased to see Across the Spider-Verse here, of course. I wasn't surprised that I got nominated, but I was very pleased because, again, if you watch my most my my top nine favorite movies of the year list that uh, that was my favorite movie of 2023 not just my favorite animated movie of 2023 but my favorite film of the year like uh, it's such a fantastic film i hope it wins just like how its predecessor did but i could see it going to either boy in the heron or elemental as well because elemental I, i'm honestly quite impressed with elemental because like yeah it's not the best pixar movie that's ever been made but like it really that film successfully goes to show the power of like the word of mouth because that film bombed horrendously on its opening weekend but because of everyone praising it and talking about how great of a film it was people went out in droves to see it. and now if i'm if my memory is correct it's in like the top 10 like highest grossing films of 2023 so yeah i know how much the academy loves pixar as much as i'd like to see spider-verse or boy in the heron win I could see it going elemental. That's just how they are, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, like, production design, we got Barbie and, you know, Napoleon costume. I, I kind of regret not watching Napoleon in theaters when I had a chance, you know, just busy. Uh, Killers of Flower Moon and Oppenheimer for best cinematography, like, yes. And Killers of Flower Moon for editing, as well as Oppenheimer, yes. <laughs> and, uh... Makeup and hairstyling, a little surprised that Barbie's not here, considering all the other nominees it was up for, but got an Oppenheimer for that as well. And sound, uh, Oppenheimer, yes, for best sound mixing and editing. And visual effects, Godzilla Minus One. I'm really disappointed that Godzilla Minus One wasn't nominated for best uh, foreign film, because it's technically a foreign film, right? It's from Japan, it's from Toho Studios. But it's here for best visual effects, which it totally deserves. Because, holy cow, they took the original design from, like, the, the the Showa era of Godzilla films, like from the 50s and 60s and 70s, and made them look menacing AF. And Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is here for visual effects too, as well as Napoleon and Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. Uh, the only Mission Impossible film I've seen is uh, Ghost Protocol, which is probably going to make some people like scream at me in the comments, yeah, I need to watch the other films, because I love Ghost Protocol, it's such a classic, I need to watch the other Mission Impossible films when I get the chance. And Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was my second favorite movie of the year, so I'm very happy to see it, a uh, provisional effects like its predecessors. And original score, Indiana Jones, Dial Destiny, yeah, John Williams, guy's a legend, as well as Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon, and, you know, no surprise there. And best original song. I'm surprised out of all the, the songs that they chose from the Barbie soundtrack to be for best original song, they chose I'm Just Ken out of all the songs they wrote for that movie. I heard that like it made it actually ruffled some feathers with the feminist crowd that it was that, that song was there because like, oh, it's the only male led song in a, such a like a female empowerment movie or whatever. I don't want to talk about politics tonight. Shh. Oh, what was I made for is here too. My bad. And yeah, I, again, if you guys want like a full, if you guys want to check out the the entire list of Academy Award nominees, I will leave a link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, again, special thanks to Shane and the Dans. Yesterday was a lot of fun, and let's do it again soon. You guys have a good night. Stay beastly.